One of the most confusing things in Excel is knowing where to put the dollar sign. Is it before the cell column letter or is it before the cell row number or is it in both? This took me months to learn correctly, but by the end of this video, it should be crystal clear. And for this, we'll go over five examples from easy to hard. So let's get into it. First up in level one, we have this example table over here, which has the price of certain products alongside the sales tax. And we want to calculate the tax amounts. Now, if you want to follow along with this one and all the other exercises that we have, download the free Excel file in the video description. All we need to do for this calculation is select the price and multiply that by the sales tax percentage and hit enter. That's looking good at 1%. And now we can just drag this down. But you'll notice as we do that, they all go to zero. If we double click on it, which is the same thing as pressing the F2 key, You'll notice that this is going down, the sales tax is going down where it shouldn't, but we do want the price to go down much like it did here. So we somehow need to just fix this part so it stays locked at this top B3 cell. So we can go back to the top one, select it with the F2 key. And from here, we're just gonna select the B3 area and press the F4 key. If you can't find the F4 key on your keyboard, you can also just type the dollar signs manually in front of the B and the three. Now, as I double click on this again to drag it down, you'll notice that it stays fixed on this side, but it remains dynamic. So it keeps going down on this other side for the blue price. That's a simple example of when the dollar sign comes handy, but this one was overly simplified. Let's go over a slightly harder one in level two. Here, you'll notice that we have several different tax rates for each country. So for the US, Japan, and Mexico. So we'll get started with the US in the same way as before where we take the price and multiply that by the US tax percentage. But this time we'll lock it with the F4 key like we did earlier. Hit enter and we can just drag this down by selecting the corner. So you can see that it's working well, even for different products, you'll notice that it's moving the right way. That said, if we copy this formula with control C and control V to paste it over to Japan, let's click on that to see what's going on. Here, it's still at the US, so that's not correct. And also with the price, it's actually moved one over to the US tax as the price, which is just completely wrong. So we really need to do two things here. One is going to be to make this one dynamic to the side, not up and down though, just sideways on row number three. And for this one, we want to keep it fixed at column G, but be able to move up and down. So let's get inside the formula again at the very first one and we need to make the changes here. So for G3, which is this one right here that we can't quite see right now, we want to add a dollar sign on the column so that it doesn't move to other columns. We can do that just by adding the dollar sign on that G there. For the number, it's row number three. We do want it to move because we want it to go across the different products. So we leave that as is. Then on this other side for the B3, we want it to move across the columns. So from B, C to D, that's why we'll delete the dollar sign from there. That said, do we want it on the number? Well, we do because we don't want it to go down to row number four, five or six, where there's actually nothing in it. Now we can just hit enter and we'll copy this formula and just drag it down and across. Just shift down arrow to go to the bottom there and shift right arrow to go to the right. And then I can just hit control V. Now you'll notice that it should be working correctly. We can just check the last one by double clicking on it. You can see that the price has gone down all the way to Doritos and we're using the Mexico tax rate, which makes sense for the Mexico column. Awesome. Now you've seen when to add the dollar signs just for the column, just for the row, as well as for both. And the next step would be to visualize all of this. And to do that, we can use chart templates like the ones HubSpot is kindly providing us. Using the link in the description below, you can get multiple graph templates completely for free. In the download, you'll find an Excel file with the instructions on using the template alongside all of the chart types you might need to visualize your data. From here, you can easily modify the data and the charts will automatically update. These templates can have either one column of data or multiple depending on your needs. 
I personally find this template useful for deciding which chart type suits my data best, as it's quite unusual to see so many different chart types in just one template. So I'd recommend you head out to the link in the description below to download these completely free templates from HubSpot to level up your Excel game, and thanks to them for sponsoring this video. We've just gone over two examples of cell referencing, but to be fully confident, let's go over another slightly different example. Over here, it just says to find the revenue under these scenarios, and you can see we have all the prices on one side and all the quantities on the other. And based on that, we wanna multiply each of them. So it would be 10 multiplied by 250 to find the revenue under these conditions. And we wanna move this all across. So if we just try to do that now, just by dragging this down, let's see what happens. If I click on this one, you'll notice that it's not moving correctly, at least from this top part. And if I were to copy this across to the side and take a look at this with the F2 key, you'll notice that it's also not moving correctly because the quantity should be fixed here. So we need to fix two things. One is gonna be this column C and the other one is going to be this row five. So let's take a look. Here, we'll press the F2 key to get inside of the formula. And the first part is gonna be this number 10 that we do want to move across, so across the different columns, but we want it to stay fixed at row five. So we'll add the dollar sign only at the row number five. Then we have the C6, which we want it to remain at this column C, so it doesn't move to the other columns and make everything wrong. So we just need to add the dollar sign in front of that C. We'll hit enter there, Control c to copy, Shift down, Shift right to select the whole area, and now Control v to paste it all. To check if it's all working correctly, we can just go to the very last one, and you'll see that it's gone all the way to 16, and the quantity all the way to 1000, so that's all looking correct. Up till now, we've been working with fairly simple scenarios, where it's only one calculation. In reality though, you'll probably mix this with a formula, like an if statement, which is what we look at in this level four. Over here, we have the instructions in bold, and it says that if the revenue here is greater than 50,000, then we wanna give them a 5% bonus, probably of the total revenue. So over here, we're gonna need an if statement. So we'll go to equals if, hit the tab key there. The logical test is that this revenue figure over here has to be greater than that 50,000, which is right here to the side. That said, right now, if we drag this down, it's all going to get messed up. So we should try to lock this with the F4 key. You'll notice we can either lock by column and row. That's one way to do it. There's nothing wrong with it. Or the other way for us to do it would be to just lock the row. So we would only row lock the five area over here. That would give us the same effect because we don't really need to move the bonus to other areas like left or right. Now, if that is the case, so if the value is true, we want to multiply the revenue itself, which we can't quite see, it's just a C5, multiplied by that bonus percentage. And again, we can leave the dollar sign in the same way as over here. So we can press the F4 key not once, but twice, so that the dollar sign is just on the end. You'll have noticed there that as you press the F4 key, the dollar sign keeps moving to wherever you would want it there and now comma, and if the value is false, they don't get a bonus, so we'll just put nothing in there with two quotations. That's all for this one, we'll close the parenthesis and hit enter. Now we can double click there to drag this down, and let's say we take a look at this one over here. You'll notice this area is working correctly, and so is this part as it's moved down to C8, and because this figure is greater than 50,000, we do get the bonus. That's an example of us using the if statement and the dollar signs, and now in level five, we'll go over something much, much harder. And I'm not expecting everyone to get this on the first try as it's quite complex. Over here, you can see that we have an income statement down below. And on this top part, we want to find out what's the revenue in 2021 and then be able to move that formula across all the way to 2023 and on different line items as well. For this, we're going to need an index match. So we'll go ahead and add that formula in first and then we'll take a look at where to add the dollar signs. So let's get started with equals index. Hit the tab key there, and the array is basically all of the numbers or the results we're interested in. 
which is going to be all of these over here. You can see I've highlighted them, comma, and now we want to add the first match. So there's two matches here. One is going to be the row match and the other the column match. From the row perspective, we have all of these different rows here. So the first match that we want, the lookup value, is we want to find out the revenue, comma, where can we find the revenue? That would basically be the array. Well, we can find it in this bottom area over here, comma, and we want this to be an exact match. We'll put a zero for that. Close up parenthesis, comma, and we'll now go over a second match. The lookup value is we're looking for the year, comma, and we're looking for the year among all of these years over here to the side. Hit the comma, and we want an exact match. Close the parenthesis, and now we need to close it again, but this time for the index side. Close that, and just hit enter. So we have 229,000 in revenue, which if we take a look, that looks about right. It's this figure right here. That said, if I move this down, let's say I move it just one down. Let's take a look at this value here. This one's clearly off because all of this bottom area is moved down by one. Same thing goes with this top part. The only part that's correct right now is the gross profit. So that's really not looking good. That's because we haven't locked the cells correctly with the dollar signs. So let's take a look. Up over here, the index, this whole area with the numbers really doesn't have to move at all. So we'll put the dollar signs all across by selecting it and pressing the F4 key once. Now for the match itself, the revenue here, you can see the B4, we want it to move down but not across. So for this, we're gonna lock it at the column, that way it can't move across the different columns. Secondly, for all of the values that we have here on the bottom, we're not gonna have to move them at all. So to make things simple, we can also just hit the F4 key once to lock them all across. And finally, for this last part, which really has to do with that year there, we want it to move sideways, but not up and down. So we just want the dollar sign on the three there. And then for this second part, it's not gonna move at all. So we can just press the F4 key all across it. Now hit enter. That answer shouldn't change, but now as we drag this down and across, so control C to copy, shift down arrow, shift right arrow, and control V to paste. Now let's take a look at net income 2023. This has moved correctly to 2023, same thing with net income. And if we take a look at the figure, 2023 net income is 53,000. So that's all looking good. If this index match formula was a bit confusing for you, don't worry, check out this video over here where I go over it in a lot more depth or by taking our Excel course over here. Hit the like and that subscribe and I'll catch you in the next one.